Why did China succeed where A.S. Mel spent a decade in detour? How did China find the secret path to a breakthrough? Who would have thought? The EUV lithography machine, hailed as the crown jewel of the industrial world, in the semiconductor industry, was once declared by Western giants to be impossible for China to master within a decade. This cutting-edge equipment claimed to be ten times harder to build than an atomic bomb. Sees ASML's EUV scanner take up the space of a double-decker bus. The light source system from the U.S.-based Symer alone requires a three-year debugging cycle, with the global supply chain involving the precise cooperation of over 5,000 suppliers across more than 40 countries. Yet, the Chinese research team found a different approach, successfully achieving a critical technological breakthrough with a machine roughly the size of a household wardrobe. This counterintuitive reversal has not only shattered decades of Western technological blockade but has also sent shockwaves through the global semiconductor industry. Technical barriers once considered insurmountable are collapsing in the face of Chinese innovation, a sole tool the size of a wardrobe. The core of the EUV lithography machine, the extreme ultraviolet light source, is the sole tool of the nanoscale sculptor. Its principle is to precisely focus a beam of light to a needle tip of 13.5 nanometers to achieve the fine etching of chip circuits. For a long time, Western companies relied on CO2 laser technology. While capable of producing the light source, this traditional solution suffers from colossal equipment size and astounding energy consumption, with light energy conversion efficiency often less than 5% leading to thousands of dollars in electricity costs per hour of operation. The Chinese research team boldly innovated, replacing it with solid-state laser technology, essentially upgrading a bulky incandescent bulb to an efficient LED. This not only reduced the equipment size to one-tenth of the original, but also achieved a high concentration of energy. This technological breakthrough allows a device that once required an entire laboratory room to be integrated onto a regular workbench laying a solid foundation for the mass production of domestic lithography machines. This is far from accidental luck. Behind this breathtaking technological breakout lies a half-century-long strategy of technological containment by the West, combined with the unconventional innovative wisdom of Chinese researchers. Today, let's peel back the layers of this EUV shadow war. How did the West construct its technological prison? How did China find the secret path? To a breakthrough? And how will this development reshape the landscape of global technological competition? I, the West's 20 year technological dead end, greater monopoly, slower innovation. ASML's EUV lithography machine is called the crown of human industry, but few realize this crown is welded together with monopoly chains. It took ASML 15 years, from its project launch in 2003 to mass production in 2018, to finalize the first-generation EUV, with the core light source entirely dependent on the U.S.-based Symer's CO2 laser system. How cumbersome is this system? The core components alone fill two shipping containers, requiring disassembly into over 300 modules for transport and six months for reassembly and debugging. The efficiency trap is even more fatal. Symer's light source conversion efficiency has been stuck around 4% for years, just short of the 5% commercial threshold. To compensate, ASML launched its high NA model in 2024, ballooning the machine's size to a double-decker bus, only to see its capacity plummet. Intel's new machine produced only 30,000 wafers in the first quarter, half the output of older models, with a utilization rate barely reaching 30%. The German Zeiss reflector mirrors are even more exaggerated, with a 12-month production cycle and a surface flatness requirement of 20 picometers, the equivalent of a mirror the size of China's landmass where the height difference cannot exceed 0.4 millimeters, and each mirror sells for the price of a luxury car. In contrast, China's solid-state laser route sidestep these pitfalls entirely. The experimental platform at the Shanghai Institute of Optics and Fine Mechanics has achieved an energy conversion efficiency of 3.42%, far surpassing the 2% of the Netherlands ARCNL and the 3% of the Swiss team, with a theoretical limit approaching 6%. The equipment size has shrunk from truck grade to wardrobe grade, 
requires no disassembly for transport, and only two weeks for debugging. Looking back at the evolution of semiconductor lithography, it's clear that the West's nearly two decades of development in extreme ultraviolet, EUV, is a textbook case of monopoly complacency. This narrative changed only when Chinese research teams sounded the charge on choke point technology and innovated a new path. Unlike the Western focus on stacking type innovation, aimed at extreme precision, Chinese engineering teams leveraged key improvements like optimized optical system design and enhanced light source efficiency to successfully modularize and integrate what were previously massive machines spanning hundreds of square meters, significantly reducing operational energy consumption and maintenance costs. This breakthrough does more than just shatter the long-standing Western technological myth. It profoundly reveals the true logic of technological innovation. Genuine core technological revolution is never about artificially creating complexity to solidify a monopoly, but rather about promoting industry development with more efficient and economical solutions by simplifying complex problems through systemic innovation. That is the most valuable contribution to industrial progress. 2. America's monopoly backlash blockade accelerates self-reliance. The U.S. has long treated the EUV light source as a chip weapon. With Symer's CO2 laser technology placed on the export control list, even requiring the censorship of key data and technical papers. In 2023, the U.S. Chips Act poured $52 billion in subsidies, attempting to pressure TSMC and Samsung to build fabs in the U.S., only to be dismissed by Morris Chang. That money is largely wasted. More ironically, America's own R&D progress has stagnated. The solid-state laser experiment efficiency at the University of Central Florida barely reached 3.5%, only 0.08% higher than China's, yet it took them 12 years. ASML's financial report exposes an even more awkward truth. In 2024, its sales to China reached 10.195 billion euros, accounting for 36.1% of its global revenue, making China its largest market but the U.S. is still pressuring it to expand controls. What's the result? China has completely jumped out of the ASML supply chain. The solid-state laser route doesn't need Symer's light source or Zeiss's mirrors. ASML President Christoph Fouke was forced to state, Blocking will only accelerate the maturity of China's indigenous technology. A statement that sounds more like a plea for mercy than a warning. In 2025, the U.S. Department of Commerce panicked attempting to add solid-state laser UV technology to its control list. But it was already too late. China's 10-kilowatt solid-state laser system is already in engineering testing. SMIC and Huahong Semiconductor have begun technical alignment, and supporting components from companies like Nora Technology Group are nearing mass production. The U.S. made a fatal error, treating a technological monopoly as a permanent privilege. Since the entity list took effect in 2019, the U.S. has used the Wassenaar arrangement to construct a technological wall, collaborating with the Netherlands to impose a full embargo on EUV lithography machines, attempting to lock China's semiconductor industry at the 14 nanometers node. This short-sighted policy is underpinned by a fundamental misjudgment of the laws of technological development. While Symer held 95% of the market with its exclusive Exymer laser light source, its R&D team only managed to improve the light source energy efficiency by 7% over 20 years, severely lagging behind the 15% annual iteration rate seen in competitive fields. Zeiss Optics, under the guise of being the world's sole supplier of mass-producible high NA reflectors, inflated the price of a single optical module to 120 million euros, retaining 17 unnecessary manual grinding procedures in its production process exposing the stagnation inherent in its technology. The path of reverse innovation, taken by Chinese companies under extreme blockade, is highly instructive. Amec, Advanced Microfabrication Equipment Incorporated, innovated plasma etching technology, achieving picometer-level etching precision through over 13,000 process calibrations. SUS Microtech has bypassed the traditional projection lithography framework, using step-and-repeat exposure combined with nanoimprint technology to achieve a 7 nanometers process based on DUV equipment. Even more noteworthy, 
In 2023, the Chinese Academy of Sciences developed super-resolution lithography technology, which completely bypasses the core EUV patents, elevating optical resolution to the 2 nanometer level. These achievements are not accidental. They are the inevitable result of China's investment of over 200 billion yen in R&D and the organized, collaborative efforts of over 200 research institutes over five years. 3. The Global Industries Awakening Moment who wants to be the perpetual sucker? For the past 20 years, global semiconductor companies have been paying tuition fees to Western oligopolies. TSMC, as a major ASML customer, pays $150 million for one EUV machine, has to wait two years in line, and spends 5% of its revenue annually on maintenance. Even more frustratingly, ASML's equipment has a back door and can be disconnected at any time. After U.S. pressure in 2022, ASML immediately halted EUV supply to China, causing domestic chip capacity below the 14 nanometers process to plummet by 40%. The global semiconductor industry is fed up with oligopolistic control. The Iron Triangle, formed by ASML, Zeiss, and Applied Materials extracts 40% of the industry's annual profit yet refuses to share technological progress. China's breakthrough is not stealing a rice bowl. It's opening a new path for the industry. It proves that technology should be open, not the private property of a few countries. When more companies have a choice, the global supply chain will be safer. This is the foundation that truly supports global technological development. This EUV shadow war is fundamentally a contest between monopoly thinking and innovative thinking. The technological barrier that the West built over 20 years has been completely torn apart by China's 10-year unconventional approach. This isn't luck, it's the best possible response to technological hegemony. What will be the future application of China's solid-state laser technology? What reversals will occur in the global semiconductor supply chain? Follow for more inside scoops on these technological breakthroughs.